Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back from the YouTube video. We're looking at some Down Under CTF, which was a capture the flag competition that was going on this past weekend. And it's been a little while since I've showcased some CTF stuff, so I want to get back on the saddle. Let's not waste any more time. We'll hop on over to my screen here. So to get started, I want to showcase some of the OSINT or open source intelligence challenges. Um, I'm kind of going to go a little bit backwards. I want to showcase that second challenge first and then kind of go back to Welcome to Pets. Instagram. So here we go. This challenge is called Badman. It said, we've recently received reports about a hacker who goes by the alias Undermater. Okay, in lead speak. Cool. He's been threatening innocent people for money and must be stopped. Help us find him and get us the flag. Roger Dodger. So since this is an open source intelligence challenge, I'm assuming I'm going to be Googling. I'm assuming I'm going to be doing an internet scavenger hunt, which might not always be the most logical thing to do. Uh, but it's probably going to be looking at some social media, probably finding some online websites. So let's hop over to our good friend, Uncle Google, and let's simply look for Undermater. Nice. Okay. So we could try regular social media things. We could check him out on Twitter, but if it looks like there's nothing going to be returned from Google, that doesn't exactly help us whatsoever uh so in that case we could just go back and use like going to twitter.com and then supplying the username that we can assume that is going to be his alias maybe he has some accounts on social media pages uh twitter linkedin facebook etc so if i specify my url twitter.com slash undermater with the lead speak characters Let's go to that page and see if we have get anything. Okay, and it looks like we found someone or something or some account. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. It looks like we have Undermater with the spooky, scary Hacker Man profile picture. Nice. Uh, 16 following, 16 followers joined July 2020. So, recent. Ooh, retweeted tweets from Down Under CTF. Okay, so it looks like we are probably on the right track. Oh, DC CyberSec had done a really cool video to hype it up. Awesome. Shout out to you, DC CyberSec. If you guys like cybersecurity videos like mine or others, uh, support other content creators and go check him out. He does really great stuff. The very first Down Under CTF will be held on 18 September. What other tweets do we have? I am not a bot. <laughs> Okay. Woo, that was close. I put out a tweet that contained personal information. Welp, I'm glad we have a delete button. Uh, interesting. I wonder if we could, like, maybe retrieve old deleted tweets. I don't know if that's a thing. Since when is VP colon QJ6IXM FZA? Not a strong password shaking my head. Hmm. Um, I thought that was kind of peculiar. Uh, originally, because I look at this and I see kind of that colon syntax, sometimes you see like a username colon password. Um, I thought like, oh, is this like base64? And I just copied this and would try and just throw it in a little terminal over here. You could just simply echo that into uh, base64 D decode, but that's nothing. So, okay. Maybe that's a password. Maybe that's his password. Maybe we could log in with his account. Maybe that's a thing. Twitter. Pretty sure probably has two-factor authentication, though. People say I'm a skid, to which I say, here's your address. Oh, oh, oh. What's that, what's that like, Neil deGrasse Tyson meme where he's like, oh, we got a badass over here. Why are the cases rising up again? Okay. What do we particularly do here? We have maybe a password, and we have this notion, okay, uh, put out a tweet that contained personal information. Glad we have a delete button. So we deleted some tweets. I went down a rabbit hole to be like, oh, let's recover deleted tweets. And you could probably see, oh, I don't know if I have any recent searches in here, but you, I would just Google like, oh, is this a thing that I can do? Can I actually recover deleted tweets? If you like search for their account. Um, I didn't end up dealing with this. Honestly, I read about this a little bit and tried like, oh, if you search for that user and like, Maybe the advanced search or something you could do. Maybe some magic. Uh, regardless, uh, I realized like, okay, if he put out a tweet that contained personal information, I'm glad we have a delete button. Sometime in the past, I thought, well, maybe we're doing some uh, way back machine action. Or maybe there was a snapshot of, of his account at some point previously. 
and maybe there's a record of what that tweet would have been. Uh, so if you haven't heard of the Wayback Machine, it's kind of a cool archiving website where you will be able to particularly look at websites or different web pages on the internet at a certain specific particular point in time. Uh, I think we actually showcased a challenge on this at one point called like Timekeeper. I don't know if that was NomCon or I don't know if that was a uh, VersetCon. It was one of the CTFs that we were doing. By the way, besides Boston CTF, September 26th, you guys should come play. Uh, so if you go to archive.org slash web, you've got the internet archive or the Wayback Machine here. So you could simply supply a link or URL that you want to see, are there any history, are there any snapshots, are there any records of this at a previous time in the past? And searching for this page in particular, it looks like we have some entries here. I see September 19th, and I see July 23rd. Um, let's start with this guy and see what that looks like. So click on that, get the date, peculiar and the you can see in the url or the address bar now it's at a particular time it says good job here is your flag oh okay awesome <laughs> it looks like that was all that we needed to do so can i click on that and go to it yeah so when i was doing this in real time uh originally when i had was playing the ctf i didn't see this september 19th one um probably because i was playing on like september 18th and what is today like the 19th i'm not positive this is not going to load, whatever. So we've got that flag. We can go ahead and submit that. Cool. Solved our, quote, easy challenge. And that did not copy. That's refusing to copy. Let me right-click copy. There we go. And, yeah, we've already kind of solved that. So good job. Here's your flag. Nice and neat. Uh, I didn't see this one originally, so I'm curious why there's a second entry. I don't know if that challenge just had something different on it but that looks like the same flag. So whatever the case may be, that was that solution, simply using uh, the Wayback Machine to be able to kind of go back in time and determine maybe a potential earlier tweet that was sent out. I don't know how realistic that would be in uh, IRL, right? I don't know if anyone will go ahead and snapshot their Twitter accounts or someone else might do that for, I don't know, weird, interesting people, but... Regardless, that was that challenge that was using Twitter. Um, you might have been wondering, okay, how do we make that giant leap for this alias or this username? How do we know to go to Twitter? Yeah, we could have gone to LinkedIn. Yeah, we could have gone to Facebook. Yeah, we could have gone to Instagram, whatever the heck. Plenty of different things. Um, let me talk about that. And let's pivot to that other challenge. Welcome to Petstagram. So this challenge prompt is, who is Alexandros the cat exactly? And who is this mysterious mum he keeps talking about? Submit his mum's full name in lowercase with the underscores instead of spaces as the flag D-U-C-T-F curly braces in the name. Okay, so they released a few hints on this challenge because it was kind of a, a struggle bus. I thought, based off the title here, Welcome to Petstagram. Okay, that's obviously a play on words for Instagram. And I thought Alexandros the cat, Alexandros might be a username. So I went back to, of course, Uncle Google and asked him, yo, dude, do you know anything about Alexandros the cat? So he Googled it. Alexander the cat is an incredible book, apparently, on Amazon. <laughs> and that didn't particularly help me. What the heck is that? All right, okay. Alexandros the Cat Instagram. Maybe I could zoom in a little bit more on that. I have some other particular individual accounts, um, and I could go look at these. This is the danger of looking at Instagram pages in a video. What are we gonna What are we gonna see? I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. It's obviously that. I'm just kidding. Alexandros Instagram, we could keep looking, we could Google around a little bit more. Eventually, what I ended up doing was just Instagram.com slash Alexandros the cat. Whack that in, and we've got this Instagram page here. We've got Alexandros the cat with two posts, 12 followers, and hi, my name is Alexandros. I love catnip and me mum. So maybe this is it. If he's mentioning my mom, that's totally what it mentioned in the challenge prompt. So this looks kind of promising. We have two wonderful pictures of an incredibly adorable cat here. Oh, and I guess I have to log in. Last pass. Thank you, security. No, you don't need my, you don't need to say my login info, dude. Last pass. I used to be small. Throwback 
Tuesday. P.S. Check out my mom's new YouTube channel. Ooh, a bit.ly link. Sketch. I don't know if I trust that link. I want to do it anyway. Great. Uh, let's keep looking around before I go visit that. But Alexandros the cat looks about right. And mom gave me a bow tie. Hashtag cool cat. Hashtag welcome to my Insta. You could do peculiar things if you wanted to like, okay, like download this. You could, you could click on go to post and then you could probably like right click and I don't know, extract the image out of here. If you want to do some crazy steganography, strings, exif tool, steg hide, steg solve. I don't know. Uh, I thought, well, okay, we've looked at the posts that he has on his Instagram page. I want to check out if he's tagged anything else. It doesn't look like he is. So I could check out who his followers are. I want to click on all these. And I could go look at these individual accounts if I really, really wanted to. Whoever you are, random strange people, <laughs> get excited because now you're apparently going to be in a video. Private account, random folks, Roger Dodger. Okay. The one that struck out to me, because if, if the Capture the Flag event, the Capture the Flag competition itself is going to be kind of preparing and staging this challenge to be visible by other people, I want to look at some of the beginning, earliest, like, followers. I wanted to see if there was anyone that maybe they had staged or, or set up for this exercise to kind of test us what might one of their friends be. So I looked at M. Waters, Emily Waters. Sounds like a female mother name. And it says, M Waters 92 I love Gelato and my cat, Alexandros. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, this is totally it. For business inquiries, please contact emilytwaters92 at gmail.com. Uh, Emily Waters, is that going to be her name? You could try and submit that if you wanted to. Emily underscore Waters. Actually, that's going to be wrong. The gimmick is you need her full name. Full name, including middle name. And I saw some folks in the Discord kind of be like, okay, what the heck? I don't know about that. How do I, where, what indicates that this is a full name, including a middle name? I noticed this Emily T. So we got an initial. That's obviously not her full name. You can't just say Emily T. Waters, and that's not all of it. That view hint will say here, hey, I'm looking for my mom's full name. Are you sure you have everything you need? So we need to know her middle name. We can... Take a look at this video. I'm going to make sure my audio is off because I know what this is. This is coffee and gelato earlier today with this cutie. Sorry for the annoying background noise. Lol, so annoying. And if I click on this video, I'm not hopefully allowing the audio to go through, but you could probably hear some beeping, some beeps and boops. Uh, I guess I can turn my volume up and maybe you'll hear it through the microphone and it won't be extraordinarily loud. Dope. Someone is like pressing buttons on their phone, right? Maybe they're texting. Maybe that, whatever the case may be. Comments on living the good life. Super duper cool. I'll go to the next one. My first host, excuse me, my first post has to be my handsome boy. Love you, Alexandros. And he's so handsome. I love you, Alexandros. Incredible. One like. Thanks, Helen. Social media. This is the pinnacle of human civilization. Instagram is just an app where you can pull up and immediately look at advertisements on your phone. That's great. Something that we could do now that we've seen this video and we're hearing these weird, interesting beeps and boops is that we could go ahead and download this video and extract what those DTMF tones might be. Um, I'm going to put in the disclaimer that this is a rabbit hole, or at least it was for me. I kind of fell down this road for a little bit, but I just want to show you how you could follow that through in the case that this is something that you might need in the future. So maybe this is bad. Skip ahead in the video if you're like, this is stupid, John, I don't care. Uh, let me just show you what this really is. We've got this Instagram video and we want to download it so we could extract out the audio. We want to get the DTMF tones or that those phone dialing sounds out of the video and kind of interpret what they might be and what they are. So I've gone ahead and viewed the post. I kind of went in that Instagram button and hit go to post and I can copy the link because what I do when I need to look for like, okay, Instagram download video, searching uh, that on Google, looks like we've got a couple different links. You could download Instagram videos online in MP3 format. And all this takes is a URL to download. So let me slap this guy in there, download the Instagram video. looks like it got it. I'll download the video in MP4. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. What did that save us? Like 11 something massive. In my CTF folder, I had a DUCTF where I've been working with some of the stuff 
OSINT. Uh, let me make a directory for YouTube. Petsagram, Petstagram, Pentagram. Uh, whoa. Uh, okay, and now let's move our downloads 11 MP4 all the way into this directory, and now we've got it. So I could mplayer this, and you'd totally be able to see it. Wow, incredible. Um, mplayer, just command line tool to watch a video. Not what we're trying to do. We want to extract the audio and the sounds from this. So what I like to do is I like to just use FFmpeg because it's super duper easy. You can use FFmpeg. And if you don't have that, it's a pseudo app install FFmpeg on Ubuntu or Debian based systems. Tack I for our input file. And then the following argument will just be what we want uh, the output to be. So I'll just call it sound.mp3 and then FFmpeg, whoa, FFmpeg will realize, okay, we just want to carve out the audio from this. We just want to now render it as an mp3 file rather than an mp4 file. So if I end player that sound.mp3, now there's no video, I just have the audio. Handy, nice, cool. I could file on all of these if I wanted to. You can see that this original mp4 file is an mp4 this sound.mp3 file is just an MPEG MP3, MP3. So now we would want to convert those DTMF tones, DTMF. And I can tell you a little bit more about those dual tone multi-frequency. It's the signal phone company, excuse me, when you press an ordinary telephone touch keys. So if you want a decoder, DTMF tone decoder, you could simply find one of the ones that I really, really like is this like ABC123. Uh, maybe I need to specify the word DTMF decoder online. Yeah, 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 dial ABC, that's what it is. Detect DTMF tones, and we have to go ahead and supply a file. So I have this in CTF, do CTF, uh, OSINT, right? YouTube, Pentstagram, sound.mp3. I will go ahead and whack this in there. And I ran headfirst into this wall because when I click on this and upload an MP3 file, it'll tell you, whoops, sorry, that's not a supported audio file format. We need to work with something different. They suggest we support Riff Microsoft WAV files and Sun Next Audio. So, okay, WAV file. Sure, whatever. FFmpeg can still work that magic. So let's go back to our command, FFmpeg tack I with our input file. And now we'll just use sound.wav and whack that in there. Cool. All right, now let's upload that WAV file and let it do its thing. It's gonna take a little bit of time because it's churning through this video, however long it may be, however much sound and audio it needs to extract out. And we'll see if we get anything peculiar. Oh, we do. 63338-06302, et cetera. So these numbers that are indicated here are the buttons that that person is pressing on their phone. I'm still in the middle of the rabbit hole here. Maybe this isn't important. Maybe somehow it is for some people. Regardless, uh, I want to continue to showcase this because that's good to know for future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those values and I'm just going to slap them in a text editor. Really gross. I only care about the lines because I've just copied and pasted this. Uh, the numbers that I saw were six, three, three, et cetera. Uh, so in this case, it's just a line that has just the number and nothing else on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a find and replace. I hit control H on my keyboard. So I have the reg regular expression mode on. So what I'll do is I'll just look for a like backslash D to denote a digit. And I'll note a dollar sign to note the very end of the line. So caret to note the start of the line, backslash D to note a single digit, and then dollar sign regular expression to denote the very, very end of the line. So you can see my six is highlighted, my three is highlighted, my three is highlighted, etc. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually hit that find all. So now I have those all selected within Sublime Text. I'll hit control X so I can copy them and put them on my clipboard. Then I'll just remove literally everything else in this file. So when I hit Control V or to paste, all I have are those numbers. That's kind of nice and kind of easy. If I wanted to kind of remove all those new lines, I could use like a backslash N and replace all of those. Now I just have that specific string. So I have in sequence the numbers that that person typed on their phone. This is a thing. If I were to go to github.com slash John Hammond slash CTF hyphen Katana, this is just kind of a resource that I had put together. Here's like my checklist of things or my, my uh, I don't know, 
playbook of things that I might be looking for or remind myself to do during a capture the flag for different kind of um, capture the flag challenges, different categories, different things, etc. One of these in here is a cell phone cipher, like the keypad cipher. Um, so you can check this out if you have any interest in it. But down, down below, I see a phone keypad. Some messages may be hidden with a string of numbers, but really be encoded with old cell phone keypads like text messaging with numbers repeated. So typically a zero is a space, but all these other numbers that might be tapped in sequence could be what you're typing on that old cell phone. So the number six, okay, that might be M because we've only hit that button once. Three, looks like we've got three, three, so that pressed it twice, that would be an E. And then eight, Okay, that's a T, that's interesting, etc. And we would go ahead and maybe fill that out. You could use a tool to be able to track down all of this information. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just look up like T9 cipher decoder. T9 can be kind of the notion for that. Okay, typing on that, that text pad. Looks like decode FR has a decent one for it. So let me go ahead and just go to that. I will slap that syntax in here and then I will decrypt T9 and it found 6338 could potentially be meet. Looks like it has a lot of certainty. 63 could respond to me, maybe, or MD or MF or ND, et cetera. Meet me makes the most sense. And 28 could be at, AT, AU, et cetera, or any of those. Um, meet me at, and then other letters that I don't exactly understand. After I had found this in real time when playing this challenge, when playing the CTF, I didn't really know what to do. I was like, okay, what the heck? Meet me at WD? Meet me at WF? Waterfront? I don't know. W, anything. X? All, any of these things, I didn't exactly know what I would be doing with that. Um, and I was kind of at a loss. So I took a step back and kind of went back to everything that we had. Uh, remember... When we were looking through this Alexandros the Cat page and we were looking at this Emily Waters page, all this stuff, we had one notion that said, hey, please check out my mom's new YouTube channel. And we had that bit.ly link. So let's go to that page and it'll bring us to this YouTube channel, Gelato Elgato. Great. They have 36 subscribers, but they have no content on the homepage. Absolutely no videos, no playlists no channels, and oh, <laughs> I left a comment in here like, hey, can I have the flack? <laughs> I guess I hadn't deleted that one yet. I, I left a comment on the Instagram ones too, and I guess they deleted those, but nice. Good troll, John. 10 out of 10. Um, in the about page, they just says, welcome to my YouTube channel, and when they joined, so this again seemed like a dead end, and I was like, WTF, what do I do with this? Why can't I solve this? This is supposed to be easy, or beginner, and I'm like, I am racking my head against this. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, eventually, we had this thought. This Gelato Elgato account, that's a new username. Because we've seen M Waters 92 or Emily Waters or Alexandros the Cat, but we hadn't seen Gelato Elgato before. That was kind of a new name. And we had fallen down the rabbit hole of checking out M Waters and how she loves Gelato. We we literally looked through all the pictures here on Gelateria, Gelateria on the docks, and was like, oh, ice cream, people, stuff. Literally nothing else that would correlate to the CTF challenge. This is just a legitimate real restaurant. So that was not good for us <laughs> to fall down that rabbit hole. But we hadn't seen this Gelato Elgato username before. And we thought, once again, uh, this is actually, like, idea came to us after we had looked at the previous challenge, the Badman one, because so we had solved that because that had a bit more, I don't know, traction. It was easier to do. We just found it on Twitter. And then we thought, like, oh, shoot. Yeah, this account might be on other social media platforms. So maybe this Gelato Elgato has an Instagram account. Can I just go to that? That's not a thing. Let's go to twitter.com slash gelato elgato. And there we go. Call me Teresa. I love gelato and my cat Alexandros. And we have an inkling now with that T initial that we saw earlier. Her full name is Emily Teresa Waters. And we could submit that as the flag. And I like these memes here. Nice, nice. Cool. 
Let's go ahead and submit that. We did Emily Teresa Waters, and that would be the correct flag. I've already solved this, so it doesn't showcase that. <laughs> That was how we ended up solving that challenge. Uh, and we were bumping around, lost, like not exactly knowing what to do for the longest time here. And I had a thought after I went through this, because I think the right methodology, the right mindset to have when you're doing this OSINT stuff or this open source intelligence information gathering, looking up, doing human intelligence on social media networks, like social networking sites, et cetera, is to keep track of those usernames because the same way that people will synchronize passwords or like use the same password on different sites, there's still the concept and idea of synchronized usernames. People will probably have the same username on different accounts or social media pages. So whenever you find a new username, you should keep track of that and then look to see, does it exist on other potential platforms? There's a really, really neat tool that does this. If I look up Python Sherlock OSINT, the Sherlock project or Sherlock has this script, this tool to hunt down social media accounts that are based off of a specific username. So hunt down social media accounts by username across different social networks, and it's super duper easy. Uh, all you really need to do is clone the repository, move into it, install the requirements, and then you're good to go. Uh, let me show you this thing, let's do it. I will just go ahead and get clone it into this current directory. And we can read her a little bit about some of the usage here. All you really need to do is supply a username and then it just finds it. It'll just keep hunting and look for things. You can supply other output, like how you want it to be, what directory or folder, or if you want to work through a proxy or tour, or comma separated value or JSON or timeout or colors, etc. And that's neat. So I'd hop over to Sherlock and I have that requirements.txt file. So I could, as the documentation had suggested, let's use like pip3 to install stuff based out of the requirements text file and all this should already be installed for me. So I could simply Python three Sherlock and I don't need that note there, dot pi. What the heck? It is, it is Sherlock.py. Oh, can I just use the whole module? Is that how that works? Python three Sherlock. I guess it just figures it out. Okay, cool. So I need to supply a username. So let's go ahead and supply our Elgato Gelato or Gelato Elgato. <laughs> Let's paste that in there and see if it tracks it down automatically for us. And when I had ran this, when I had tinkered with it and played with it, I'll be honest, it was kind of slow. And I don't know why. Uh, I know this thing is using threading. I know this thing is doing cool stuff. I know it's supposed to be lightning fast. It took a little bit of time for me to get all those results. Uh, anyway, it found Twitter. It also went to mobile Twitter, which is kind of peculiar, but sweet, good enough. And it could find it on LinkedIn. I don't know if that's actually an account or not. Nope, guess not. And Taringa, whatever the heck that is. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll trust that. Uh, anyway, Sherlock was running a little bit slow for me, so uh, I actually recommend using the Docker file. So if you want to, you can just grab it from docker hub and you can literally docker run sherlock and then the username that you want to supply so let me do that docker run sherlock uh i've already got that pulled in that image if you hadn't ran that command before it might have to pull the image down for you to work with so docker run sherlock and then the command that you want to work with or the username it was gelato elgato please i think i repeatedly forget this gelato elgato yep Let's whack that. And now it's like, whoa, boom. Okay, we're checking out all these different locations. Academia, Bandcamp, Basecamp, Bitbucket, Blip, AskFM, 9gag, et cetera. Some of these might not have accounts that it'll tell you, hey, not found. So you could grab that out if you really, really wanted to. But this, it seemed to be doing a little bit more faster than the other one was. And it got a lot like, oh, hey, here's that Twitch account. Excuse me, here's that Twitter account. Here's that YouTube account, et cetera. Even Tinder, nice. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's that. Holy cow. This has been a long video and it probably really didn't have to be, but I hope you don't mind me talking a lot. I hope you don't mind me showcasing some of the things that, uh, the rabbit holes that I fell down, just showcasing some more of my methodology and stuff that happened. What was that second hint they released? What did they actually use here? If you have Alexandra's mom's given name and surname, what else could there be left to find to get her full name? Okay, so yeah, it's mentioning the middle name and doing a little bit more uh, hunting and digging around on the internet.
So that's the thing with OSINT. It's an internet scavenger hunt sometimes. Uh, I'd like to be able to showcase this uh, going to take off because not a ton of people solved this, and I know we did. So I will see if I can remind myself what we did to go through that. But uh, that is Badman, and that is Welcome to Petstagram. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I talk forever, and this is way, way longer than it needs to be. But thanks so much. I appreciate you tuning in. Check out another Capture the Flag video doing some OSINT with me. And that is enough of me yapping. If you did like this video, please do do those YouTube algorithm things. I would love if you could like the video, maybe leave a comment, maybe subscribe. You know, I'm super duper grateful. And if you like Capture the Flag, please, please, please register for B-Sides Boston CTF. You can go to bsidesboss.ctf.games, that website. And September 26th, I'm hosting that Capture the Flag event. It'll run for about eight hours. We're going to try some new stuff with dynamic scoring and new infrastructure, like user-based containers. It'll be cool. It'll be fun. So that's enough of me talking. Let me end the stinking video. Thanks, everybody. I love you. Take care.